Paddington has to go to school, exclaimed Mrs. Brown. But there must be some mistake. Paddington isn't a... I mean, he's a... Well, said the inspector. May I ask why he has to go to school, said Mrs. Bird. According to our information, he's been living at this address for a number of years, and we have no record of a single attendance. But he was brought up in darkest Peru. His Aunt Lucy taught him all she knew before he left for England, and she went into the home for retired bears in Lima. I'm afraid, madam, said the inspector, that the home for retired bears in Lima is not on our list of approved establishments. We shall expect to see him at St. Luke's School first thing tomorrow morning. Good day. Tomorrow morning, said Mrs. Brown, what shall we do? There's only one thing we can do, replied Mrs. Bird. Make sure that bear arrives on time. Paddington, Paddington, where are you? Paddington, I've got something to tell you. You have to go to school. Paddington was very set in his ways, and Mrs. Brown hadn't been looking forward to breaking the news that he had to go to school. But once he got over the first shock, he seemed to take it surprisingly well, and he spent the rest of the morning polishing his old leather suitcase until it shone so brightly he could almost see his whiskers in it. He even had a bath that evening without being asked, which was most unusual. And if he did spend more time studying Jonathan and Judy's old school books than actually washing, at least it showed his heart was in the right place. All in all, what with the bath and his new hat, he looked so spick and span when he set out next morning, even Mrs. Bird's eagle eyes were unable to find fault. I knew something like this would happen one day, sniffed Mrs. Brown. No more visits to the market. No more calling in to see Mr. Gruber on the way. Most good things come to an end sooner or later, said Mrs. Bird. We must make the best of it. still can't believe it, said Mrs. Brown. The house seems so quiet without him. I dare say he'll be back before we know it, said Mrs. Bird. Anyway, we shall see him this afternoon. It's the school assembly. They're putting on a special show for the parents. So they've all got the afternoon off. I wonder what he's doing now, sighed Mrs. Brown. He's a very popular bear. He's probably hard at work, bent over his desk, doing his addition. Perhaps, said Mrs. Bird, and then again, perhaps not. is the meaning of this, this outrage? Stand up at once, the girl or boy who did this. I warn you, if no one owns up immediately, you will all miss the school assembly this afternoon. Excuse me, Mr. Crouch, called Paddington. Did you say stand up, the girl or boy? Ah, there you are. You must be Brown, the new, <laughs> yes. I did say stand up, the girl or boy. Well. I'm not a girl or a boy. I'm a bear. So it's all right. It is not all right. What are you doing up there? I was showing the others how the Indians in darkest Peru used to do their hunting. First, they did a war dance. <laughs> then they blew poison darts. I'm afraid I haven't got any, so I used marmalade chunks dipped in ink instead. 
Oh, I'm very sorry, Mr. Crouch. I think I must have done it again by mistake. Silence! Put my recorder back where you found it. I didn't know it was yours, Mr. Crouch. Let me clean it for you. Bear's lips get a bit sticky. It's all the marmalade they eat. Besides, I think I may have been dribbling down the end. There must be a marmalade chunk stuck halfway down. A marmalade chunk, exclaimed Mr. Crouch. I've never heard of such a thing. I'm sorry, Mr. Crouch. I'm afraid it's a bit difficult playing the recorder with paws. Uh, <clears throat> yes, well, don't let it happen again. Back to your desk. It's time for the roll. I assume I have your permission. Bear? Oh, yes, Mr. Crouch. Don't mind me, said Paddington. I shan't be very long. I've made over 30 already. Over 30? What? Marmalade sandwiches. I'm afraid I didn't bring any rolls, but I've got lots of sliced bread and a jar of my special marmalade. I'm glad I didn't use up all the chunks in your recorder. Marmalade sandwiches. Marmalade sandwiches, shuddered Mr. Crouch. I've a good mind to take them to the principal. All of them, repeated Paddington, hardly able to believe his ears. Even I've never managed to eat that many at one time. <laughs> Silence! I mean that I intend to confiscate them. Marmalade sandwiches in class. I've never heard of such a thing. Paddington slumped back into his seat. There seemed to be a lot of things Mr. Crouch hadn't heard of. As far as Paddington was concerned, he hadn't heard of anyone having their marmalade sandwiches confiscated. And he looked most upset. We are not here to learn how to make marmalade sandwiches, explained Mr. Crouch. We are here to learn the three R's. The three R's, Mr. Crouch? I didn't know there were three R's. Ah, uh, well, <clears throat> we learn something new every day. The three R's are reading, writing, and arithmetic. And today, we happen to be starting with arithmetic. Now, I've written out a little problem. 14 plus 7 equals 20. And I have made a deliberate mistake. Can anyone tell me what it is? I can, Mr. Crouch. Ah, Brown. I'm glad to see you're so quick. What is your answer? You don't spell arithmetic with an R, Mr. Crouch. <laughs> I know you don't spell it with an R. I never said you did. Excuse me, Mr. Crouch, but you did. You said there are three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic. <laughs> I may have said it, but I didn't mean it. Uh, that is to say, I... Oh, that's all right, Mr. Crouch. We all make mistakes. I know what it looks like because my Aunt Lucy taught me. Arithmetic begins with an A. I am sorry to say, I am not familiar with your Aunt Lucy's curriculum. <laughs> I'll show you a picture of her if you like, Mr. Crouch. She had it taken just before she went into the home for retired bears. I mean that I don't know anything about her teaching capabilities. If she has any. Paddington gave Mr. Crouch a hard stare. It was one of his hardest ever, the kind he reserved for special occasions. Uh, uh, he was a polite bear at heart, but he was beginning to get upset at the way things were going. My Aunt Lucy is very good at spelling, Mr. Crouch. She's always sending me postcards, and some of them have very big words. Are you suggesting, Bear, that I can't spell? Oh, no, Mr. Crouch. You got the word reading right, I'm sure one out of three is very good. Silence! Yeah. Oh, dear, Mr. Crouch. I think you put your hand in my marmalade sandwiches. The principal won't be very pleased. Mr. Crouch looked as if he was taking advantage of his own arithmetic lesson in order to practice counting up to ten. Since you appear to have such a deep interest in food, Brown, perhaps you would like to go out and do some shopping for me. Some shopping, Mr. Crouch. Oh, yes, please. Bears are good at shopping. Good. Perhaps, at long last, we have found something that we are best at doing. Oh. Are you coming too, then, Mr. Crouch? No, Brown, I shall not be coming too. But it so happens I shall be needing some fish. Some fish? Yes, Brown, fish. You may take as long as you like. Don't hurry back. 
Oh, don't worry, Mr. Crouch. I shan't be long. I shall be back before you've even got to the second hour. <laughs> that, said Mr. Crouch, is what I'm afraid of. Yes? No. Really? Good gracious. It's Mr. Gruber. He's just met Paddington coming out of the supermarket. How's he getting on? He doesn't think much of his teacher. Mr. Crouch can't spell. And he doesn't seem to know very much. He's always asking questions. But what was Paddington doing in the supermarket? Asked Mrs. Brown. Buying some fish. But he took a whole suitcase full of food with him when he went to school this morning. I don't like the sound of it, said Mrs. Bird. I don't like the sound of it at all. Fish are, of course, found in all the oceans of the world, and they are a great source of food. I'm back, Mr. Crouch. Ah, good work, Brown. You're just in time. I have brought you some fish sticks. They're a special offer in the supermarket. The man said they'd be all right, provided you eat them before next Tuesday. Eat them? I don't want to eat them. I want to cut them up. They're for my biology lesson. Fish sticks. Fish sticks in a biology lesson. Sir, sir. What is it, Martin? We could all go outside and dig for worms, sir. How about it, sir? Worms are good for cutting up. No, no. I have a much better idea. Yeah. You must be young Paddington Brown, the new... Uh, uh, <clears throat> I'm Mr. Trout, your principal. Gather your keen on shopping. How do you do, Mr. Trout, said Paddington politely. I gather you're keen on marmalade sandwiches. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> well, keep up the good work. I'm collecting these for Mr. Crouch. He says if I dig a deep enough hole, I shall get some very special ones. He says I can take as long as I like. <laughs> oh, well replied Mr. Trout. There's no great hurry. You'll be at school until you're 16. Paddington gazed at Mr. Trout as if he could hardly believe his ears. 16, he repeated. 16? But I thought I was only here for the day. Dear me, no, laughed Mr. Trout. You've got a good many years to go yet. Ah, lunchtime. We'd better not be late. It's the school assembly this afternoon. All the parents will be coming. You'd better hurry too, Brown. New students are expected to help with the serving. Paddington spent the next quarter of an hour as if in a dream. All he kept hearing was the sound of Mr. Trout's voice. Oh, keep up the good work. There's no great hurry. After all, you'll be at school until you're 16. You'll be at school until you're 16. 16. 16. 16. In fact, he didn't know whether he was coming or going. Even his tin of worms had disappeared. A horrible thought suddenly struck him. Mm -hmm. I, I must say, this stew tastes remarkably good today. It's smashing, sir. I don't remember it ever being quite so tasty. I wonder why. Paddington doesn't seem to think much of it, sir. What's the matter, Brown? Why aren't you eating the stew like everyone else? Speak up, Brown. I can't hear a word you're saying. Silence. Now, <clears throat> Brown, would you mind repeating that? I said I don't fancy it, Mr. Trout, thank you very much. You don't fancy it, Brown? <laughs> Why ever not? I think I may have dropped Mr. Crouch's tin of worms in the pot by mistake. <laughs> Mr. 
<laughs> Go to my office, Brown, and wait for me there. As for assembly this afternoon, who knows what's going to happen now? Paddington felt most upset. Losing Mr. Crouch's tin of worms was bad enough, but the thought of being the cause of the school assembly being cancelled was even worse. He gazed at a poster advertising it. There was someone playing a violin and someone else lifting some heavy weights, not to mention something called a can-can. It all sounded very interesting. Mrs. Brown and Mrs. Bird were hoping to come and see it, he announced to the world in general. He closed his eyes while he considered the matter. If only there was some way of saving the day. 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 Yes, as I was saying, announced Mr. Trout, I very much fear that, owing to circumstances beyond our control, the entire cast of this afternoon's little uh, entertainment has been taken ill. In the meantime, and at the very last moment, we have a volunteer to take on the difficult task of performing all the acts. Yeah, thank you. With the help of the nimble fingers of our music teacher, Miss Crimshaw, on the electronic organ. Thank you. And on the drums, Deirdre Wainwright. We give you our newest student, Paddington Brown. Paddington. Well, I never. First, <coughs> the flight of the bumblebee. change of mood, all the way from darkest Peru, the strongest bear in the world. isn't going to do himself a mischief.
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And now we come to what was to have been the high spot of the afternoon. The girls of the sixth grade performing the can-can. I beg your pardon? I, uh, I think we may be in for the can't-can't. Everybody, called Mr. Trout, I think we must all congratulate young Brown on a truly remarkable performance. You have certainly saved the day. And as a reward, we have decided to give you your diploma. That means, explained Mr. Crouch, you need never go to school again. I don't think I'll be able to anyway, Mr. Crouch, said Paddington. I'm afraid I can't get up. Oh, <laughs> come now, Brown. Come along now. Come along now. Come along. Wake up, Brown. <laughs> Wake up. I've someone to see you. Paddington, said Mrs. Brown, what have you been up to? And what's all this about putting worms in the school lunch? Asked Mrs. Bird. I think I've had a dream, Mrs. Bird. I was being chased by a bee. Well, <coughs> all's well that ends well, said Mr. Trout. You'll be pleased to know Mr. Crouch's tin didn't fall into the stew after all. We found it at the end of the conveyor belt, added Mr. Crouch. It still seems to be quite, quite full. I didn't say the worms had fallen in, Mr. Crouch, corrected Paddington. I only said they might have done. <laughs> well, well, you may also like to know that we have received an urgent letter from the authorities. It seems there's been a mistake. There's nothing in the rules to say that bears must attend school. I've been asked to give you this diploma to say you need never come again. Ever. Thank goodness, explained Mrs. Bird. Aunt Lucy will be pleased. What do you say to that, Paddington? Mm -hmm. Hear me. <laughs> he seems to have fallen asleep. Wake up, Brown. You'll miss the assembly. Mm -hmm. But Paddington was too far gone to answer. I expect he's had a tiring day, said Mrs. Brown. Goodness knows what he's got his mind on now. Perhaps, said Mrs. Bird, it's just as well we don't know. With Paddington, it could be anything. Anything. <laughs> 